So in this lecture now, I'm going to discuss um, what we do when we have the intermediate form. HA minus, which dissociates from one sodium here. And it's starting out pure or alone in water. So once again, for any polyprotic acid, please write out the following equilibria where H2A could dissociate once to form HA minus or could dissociate a second time to form A2 minus. And we know the equilibrium constants from before were pKa3 and pKa9, those were given. And the pKbs come from subtracting from 14. So in this solution, we have HA minus, which we solve as both an acid or it can dissociate from a proton moving towards A2 minus, okay? When it acts as an acid, it'll react with water according to Ka2. Or this equilibrium constant here, which is nine, means Ka2 is 10 to the negative nine. This reaction is increasing the amount of hydroxide or making the solution more acidic, a lower pH. However, HA minus is also a base. If it accepts a proton, when it reacts with water, that's going to be a KB or KB2, which comes from PKB2, 10 to the negative 11. Generating hydroxide will make the solution more basic or will increase the pH. So what we see here is there's sort of a tug of war or two opposing forces that are affecting the pH of this aqueous solution. And if you were going to solve this problem, you would have to do an ice table for the monoprotic acid in water, and you'd have to do an ice table for the monobasic form in water. And two ice tables that would be interdependent, or they're related because it's the same solution, they contain concentrations that relate to one another, that would be a difficult problem. So if you start to do a problem where you're about to solve two ice tables that are related and involve two quadratic expressions, you should stop. There's an equation that will accurately tell you the hydronium concentration for this solution. So when you have an amphiprotic or something that is both an acid and a base, but not just when you have it, when you have it specifically alone in water without a considerable concentration of its either deprotonated or protonated forms. You're going to use this isoionic equation. So the isoionic equation is this, the square root of the first Ka multiplied by the second Ka times the formal concentration Okay, recall this formal concentration here is the molarity or 0.2 molar for this specific example. The total molarity of all A containing species plus the first Ka times the Kw all over the formal concentration plus Ka1. So you'll get the exact pH if you solve this problem here and you actually take the negative log, right? However, there's a simplification that often works, especially to, within a couple pH 
decimal points. So first of all, we can also, we can often assume that the concentration of the solution, which in this case was 0.2 molar, is much larger than the first equilibrium constant. In this case, it was 10 to the negative three. So when you add formal concentration plus Ka, it should still approximately be equal to the formal concentration. So that allows me to take this equation and simplify the denominator. I can now say this is really just the formal concentration. That's the first assumption. Another assumption that generally holds is that Ka1 multiplied by Kw is approximately zero because Kw is already quite small. At 25 degrees Celsius, it's 10 to the negative 14. Ka1 is 10 to the negative three, right? So those multiply to give 10 to the negative 17, which is negligible. So you can take this once simplified equation and do so again and subtract out this term. It's not going to change the numerator very much. Now we see that this hydronium concentration should be independent of formal concentration for relatively concentrated solutions. And so on your equation sheet, you will see this equation as well, which is an accurate estimate and a quick estimate of the hydronium concentration for the amphiprotic species alone in water. Now, most time, we're actually interested in reporting the pH, right, to do decimal places. So let's just take the negative log of each side here, right, or that gives us the pH. And I'm gonna write it as negative log of Ka1 multiplied by Ka2, all raised to the one half power, right, or the square root. And when you have an exponent, right, for something inside of a log, then you can say that exponent is a coefficient out front. So this is the negative one half log of the product of Ka1 and Ka2. And another log rule that's useful is we can say two things multiplied inside of the log is the same as the sum of their individual logs. And now you might recognize Negative log of Ka1 is pKa1. And negative log of Ka2 is pKa2. And this equation is known as the isoelectric equation, at which point a Zwitter ion is in maximal concentration. We'll talk about that more with amino acids uh, later in time. So for HA minus, it was a 0.2 formal solution, right? It's essentially alone in water. It makes a slight amount of its conjugate forms, right? We saw that two reactions were affecting the pH because HA minus was both an acid and a base. And one of those was pulling the pH down, right? The Ka2. One of them was increasing the pH, Kb2. But what we saw as well was that Ka2 was larger than Kb2, right? Check out these values. Ka2 is 100 times larger. So what that means is the pH should be less than seven, right? Or the amount of hydronium should be greater and the amount of hydroxide should be lesser. That exact pH for an HA minus or amphiprotic species alone in water is found by this isoelectric equation, right? pH equals the average of the pKa's or the average of three and nine. And that pH is six. Now we've seen confirmation of this idea before, okay? 
if you go back to a previous video, right, you'll recall a fractional composition plot here. And we saw that when HA minus was approximately 100% up here at the top, or a fraction of one, that would occur at pH six. It was by itself, essentially, which is the average of the two pKa's, or the half equivalence points. So we'll find out soon, this is an equivalence point, pH, on a titration. So let's go back to the problem and find the remaining concentrations that were asked for. Okay, since we know the pH now, I'm going to rewrite those acid and base or dissociation and association equilibria. This was the one that was making the pH acidic, right? We saw the pH was less than seven. This Ka2 was 10 to the negative nine. HA minus can also protonate water to give, or sorry, be protonated by water, excuse me, to give H2A. And when water deprotonates itself, it becomes OH minus. And that was 10 to the negative 11 equilibrium constant. So from these equilibrium constants, we can now relate some of the variables, right? We know the hydronium concentration is 10 to the negative six, right? We know the pH. And now we can simply solve for the concentration of the fully basic form and the fully acidic form. So recall this concentration here is 10 to the negative six or 10 to the negative pH. So Ka2 is equal to A2 minus multiplied by hydronium over HA minus, or it's A2 minus multiplied by 10 to the negative six over approximately still 0.2, or because the equilibrium constant's small, very little of this HA minus is consumed when it reacts to form A2 minus. So this remains a constant approximately 0.2, a slightly less. So Ka2 is 10 to the negative nine. You can simplify this and say 10 to the negative three times 0.2 to the concentration of A2 minus, or two times 10 to the negative four molar is your concentration. Now we see that H2A appears in the KB2 expression. So KB2, which is 10 to the negative 11, should equal the concentration of H2A times hydroxide over HA minus. We said HA minus is approximately 0.2 molar, hasn't changed much, okay? And the H2A concentration is the unknown. This hydroxide here comes from Kw divided by 10 to the negative six, right? Or Kw divided by hydronium. Recall the hydronium is 10 to the negative six. So then we have 0.3 times, or 0.2 times 10 to the negative three, we actually have the same molarity of H2A. So for an amphiprotic species alone in water, you average the pKa's to find the pH. That's simple. From there, you relate the concentrations of all forms of A, right? Diprotic, monoprotic, and the fully basic using the equilibrium constants. Once we know the pH, we know these product concentrations. And then we can find other unknowns. 
So for more practice on polyprotic acid base equilibria, uh, you can visit unit one of my analytical chemistry course guide at chemguides.com. And you can view more content uh, in acid base under the free content tab at chemguides.com.